Japan Journal, the Internet's number one English language weekly online cybercast from Japan. Japan Journal with Mal Adams. And a very pleasant good evening to you, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Japan Journal, the Internet's number one English language weekly online cybercast from Japan. Japan Journal coming to you live from the Media Arts Lab in beautiful downtown Kakiawa City. And we got a special guest in the house tonight. Let me get him on camera number two. Ladies and gentlemen, say hi. Richie Love, homie. Don't you know? Hello. <laughs> Good to be Konnichiwa. here. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. It's great to have you on the show, man. It's been a while. Long time coming, trying to work out the technical difficulties, but we're rolling now, so let's see what it is, man. Congratulations yeah. from the outset. Let me congratulate you on the brand new project, New Horizons. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I understand it's doing well globally, man, on some of the online uh, charts and broadcasts. Talk to me. Tell me how, you, how it's being received. Yes, yes. We... Uh, right now, we are the number one uh, album for the past eight weeks on Blast FM and Last FM. Uh, I'm the number two smooth jazz artist there, uh, and it would, I'm just very proud, just very, I'm ecstatic and proud uh, at what we've accomplished. Uh, and I'd like to start out by sending love and special acknowledgments from the members of the SGI USA, the co-producer of the CD, Johnny Payton, Exco, the producer, uh, Kerry Washington. Uh, we would like to send our acknowledgments and appreciation to the SGI members of Japan for their great efforts in our movement towards world peace. Beautiful. Uh, SGI. Sukagakai International is the name of that uh, international uh, denomination of the Nichiren um, Shoshu, uh, I believe, is the, is the very sect that represents this international version of Buddhism. Yes. And uh, their mantra, the chant is. Uh, you know what you've heard it from your friend Nam Yo Ho Nam Yo Ho All right, man. Yes. Shout out to all the Soka Gakkai brothers and sisters in and around the world, and of course, right here in Japan. We've got a lot of them listening to this program right now. And we appreciate so it. Joy to have you. You know, uh, I've been promoting this this broadcast, man, but. Uh, let me uh, get on camera one here, and I want to share your background uh, with our listeners, man. And it's just easier to get it all in if I um, read it. So let me grab this, uh, this introduction here because I don't want to miss anything, man. There's so <laughs> much information, man. We go back so many years, bro. Oh, boy. And... So many years. and, and uh, in our older years, we you were in California, I was in Japan. But for our viewers, man, let me uh, outline this uh, profile of you. Richie Love, a.k.a. the sexiest man alive, is a gifted saxophonist, vocalist, and innovative virtuoso music artist. At an early age, he was nurtured deep in the genre roots of jazz, blues, rhythm and blues, and funk. Richie plays all saxophones. He's a composer, a producer, arranger, vocalist, band leader, teacher, and mentor, and executive in the record industry, CEO of Sax World Productions since 1985, established in Los Angeles. His first record release was in 1987. Richie started playing alto sax at the age of six and has performed, recorded, and studied with some of the greats, including Johnny Otis, Buddy Miles, another brother from our hometown of Omaha, Nebraska, Norman Connors, Shuggy Otis, Andre Lewis, otherwise known as Mandre, 
and he is uh, near Northside Omaha, another great Omaha musician whose wife, Maxan, spent a lot of time here in Japan. And uh, of course, uh, she was the lead vocalist for that ensemble with Andre Lewis, Mandre, the band named uh, Maxan. Also, Lololi Washburn, Barbara Morrison, Ricky Minor, and Lester Abrams, another homeboy of ours. Yes, a great musician who had a Grammy Award winning hit. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was that the Doobie Brothers, Richie? Yes, yeah, minute by minute. Minute by minute. You know that tune. That's our homeboy, Lester Abrams, and a close associate and, and session man with Richie and his family. Now, uh, Richie's been in and around the music business all his life. He's performed on thousands of concerts, recordings, TV, radio CDs, music festivals, and venues. And Richie's band, The Love Connection, has been rocking audiences for over 25 years from coast to coast all over the nation and around the world, as a matter of fact. They've performed on countless jazz, R&B, blues, music festivals, and have headlined with the likes of Hank Crawford, Les McCann, Buddy Miles, Wayman Tisdale, Preston Love Sr., his illustrious and virtuoso father. We'll talk more about that as we explain his, uh, his own virtuosity. He couldn't get around it with a, raised in a family like that. Preston Love Sr. and many more. As I mentioned, Richie was family mentor and naturally influenced by the music of his late and great world-renowned father, Preston Love Sr., the purveyor and historian of classical jazz and blues. Preston performed with historical legends from Count Basie and Billie Holiday to Aretha Franklin and Marvin Gaye. And in the 60s, he became Motown's first West Coast orchestra leader and contractor. Did you ever meet Marvin and, 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 and some of these people, man? Oh, oh yes, yes. Tell me about that. What was it like? Oh, growing up under your dad and being in a house like this. I mean, it was like you took that for granted, huh? It's just the cats who were around, huh? <laughs> well, in a way, I, I would say in a way, but we were aware because we'd see them on TV and we'd go, oh, hey, they were, about, they were just over at the house, you know? And that's and so that was really uh, quite fabulous. I mean, it was it was a wonderful thing to live that. Uh, I know, it must have been, man. But, so how old were you when you picked up the uh, saxophone? Or, or was that your first instrument? The saxophone was my first instrument. And uh, uh, for Christmas, when I was six years old, that was my Biggest Christmas present was saxophone, uh, and and, uh, and then eight years later, when I was fourteen, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, I um, I was playing with Leonard Williams, and we we moved back to the basket. I was playing with. Leonard Williams at the MCO Club. I had to paint on the mustache. And uh, how old were you? A uh, fourteen. Wow. And that was my first, my first show with wow. the NCO Club. So, Richie, tell me about New Horizons, the new project, man. By the way, congratulations on it. I love the tunes. It's grown folks' music, man. And uh, it's amazing that it's this day and time when hip hop is driven the so industry much. for so long. Just good, real, beautiful jazz music, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Kerry Washington, who produced it, of course, you know, from home. Yes, sir. Uh, from Omaha. And uh, I actually produced my first album and his first album ever. Uh, that we recorded was uh, I produced produced it in 1987. I released it, and it was feature, featuring Gary Washington, and uh, uh, so we come full circle. Uh, we've been friends for since oh my goodness the uh, 70s, and um, 
So he that he his he's a very talented writer and producer and vocalist, but and he produced this uh he's a, and, he's a great entertainer as well. Uh, yeah, and, oh, yeah, and he was a very he was very kind to me and my family when we went through Las Vegas from Japan uh many years back when he had his band there and playing at one of the big hotels, man. And, it was. I was so proud. This is my little homeboy, man, and yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. got me front and center, and uh, uh, looked after the kids. And man, we went two or three nights every night during our stay there. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, his his band was the top band in Vegas for all oh, many years. They were the right. number one band group in Vegas for many many years, and. Uh, uh, so, so you got vocals on this on on this new project as well. He's doing uh, some some uh, mostly background. Okay. Uh, he does lead on uh, number eleven. Uh, it's on, and then uh, and the rest he does quite a bit of background work on. And uh, yeah, I it, he produced this uh, so well, and he. he he knows me so well. That's the reason I, one of the reasons I mentioned it because he knows me so well and knows my style and knows what I like musically. Right. And so he really took that all into account. And so come up with this, these 12 songs that I'm able to really express myself. Um, a lot of them really able to express myself. Yes. Yes, and, I can wait for um, uh, and I'll play a few of the clips on here. One song in particular that uh, is featured on your recently completed uh, promotional video. Yes. Tell me about that tune. What's the name of the tune? Feeling Good About Myself. Feeling yeah. Good About Myself. Yeah. And, and uh, we'll play a little, little track of that. Let me play a little bit of that uh, right here, and then when we come back, you can tell me about that. Here. Okay. Here's... New Horizons is the name of the project. Feeling good about myself, Richie Love. I just know how I feel 
Okay, we're back. That was feeling good, and you know, I, I'm feeling good listening to it, man. Yeah. <laughs> really nice yeah. piece, man. Really nice piece. Beautiful piece. Uh, I wrote that song, uh, and I had written a different version of it, and uh, Carrie, I, I called Carrie, and I said, I played it for him, and I sang the words for him, and uh, he said, oh, uh, I said, I want you to, I called him to, um, I, I had written uh, 17 songs that I was doing, and, and so I told him, I said, Kerry, I need you to help me with this stuff. I want you, I want your input, because I was really involved, as they say, sometimes when you get too involved in things, and you can't you're too involved in it. And so I know that I could count on Kerry for uh, all the different aspects. And so he said, well, I want you to do this and change this and do that. And he was, as we progressed and we were doing different songs, and I said, Kerry, listen, how about this? You take over, you, you do, you do this thing. And he said, what? I said, because I, I was feeling everything that he was saying, you know. Sure. I know him. I mean, we, we know each other. Great collaboration, like, man. We're uh, brothers. brothers. We can hear, yeah. yeah. We're brothers. Yeah, so yeah, we know nice. each other like brothers. Yeah, and that, that's great. So we we feel each other. And, um, but the, uh, so feeling good about myself is just what it, what it is. I was feeling good. That music made me feel good. And I wanted other people to feel good. Kerry picked up on that, and we put it all together. And what we were feeling good about ourselves, and we want other people to feel good about themselves when they listen to it, or feel yeah. good. Period. Period. Right. And but, uh, uh, it's 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 on heavy rotation and on several uh, satellite channels and whatnot on the internet. Is that right? Yes, as I as I was saying uh, earlier, we're number one for the past eight weeks. And I'm the number uh, two smooth jazz artist on Blast FM, Last FM. Uh, I was number one artist. I'm down to number two. Uh, uh, me and Sade are battling for the second place. Oh, oh man. We go, back, we go back every week. We go back two and three. She's number two. I'm number three. She's number three. I'm number two. Oh, man, we listen. go back for I was number one for a while. And... Uh, there's a young lady that's uh, uh, holding number one for a little bit. She's she's pretty tough. We're battling her. <laughs> well, <at least. laughs> that's amazing. I'm gonna get her that's though. Amazing. I'm gonna get her. I'm gonna get her back. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. Good luck with that. Yeah. And now, uh, let's just uh, let our folks know here in Japan. Where can this uh, project be purchased online? Uh, are you on like uh, you, your own can, website then? Yeah, uh, you could purchase. Uh, we could purchase almost anywhere if you Google Richie Love New Horizons. It'll come up, and and it's everywhere. It's Amazon, Spotify. It's it's uh, CD Baby. It's uh, iTunes, Apple. Uh, it's 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 everywhere. Uh, autograph copies. You can get through me, uh, through my email. Uh, you can write me at Sax World, Sax World Prod at gmail.com, like Sax World Productions, but Sax World Prod. Right. And uh, you can flash that for me if you wouldn't mind later. Absolutely. We'll put yeah. that right up here. As a matter of fact, there, there it goes. It's scrolling right there. Fantastic. All right. And um, also, uh, I, um, I'm re really proud to announce that uh, this August, the 23rd, I will be inducted into the Nebraska Music Hall of Fame. Uh, it's just, it's not quite public yet, but we're, we're yeah, making well, it. it is now, because we, we're, we we're going to drop it We're making it public for our, for our uh, <laughs> Our Japan fans and friends. Fantastic. But yeah. don't forget, this is a global broadcast. Yes, sir. CNN yeah. Global News Network. And so all the home folks from Omaha 
are tuned in. Believe that. We got several hundred regular shout out to the show. So shout so, out to the near north side. Yes. You know, over, yeah. That's where we grew up, y'all. And yes. uh, that is I'll a beautiful be thing and a, and a well-deserved tribute, my brother. Thank you so much. That also, uh, uh, I want to. Your I'm father sorry to preceded uh, you uh, in that Hall of Fame, did he not? Pardon me, I'm sorry. Your father preceded you being inducted. Yes, yes, in 1998. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and I understand uh, this, this go is ahead, the first I'm sorry. time it's been a father and son. First time ever situation. father and son induction. Yes. In the state of Nebraska. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. And uh, I'll be doing a Hall of Fame concert on August 15th at the Jewel uh, and, and, uh, there uh, in Omaha. The and historic Jewel building? Is that the former Jewel no, building? Uh, it was named after the after oh, Jim Jewel's. Yes, it is named at the jewel, the jewel Bill. Yes, and uh, it, it it is uh, uh, in downtown Omaha. Okay. Yes, the Jewel. Now and, let's talk about your your upbringing. Uh, born in Omaha, Nebraska, you left early on for California. Your dad went out to uh, take the Motown job as the uh, what was the title? Uh, he was the contractor slash band leader. Right. Yes. And, and then uh, you came back in your high school years or junior high years? We yeah, well, we moved back, yes, to Omaha uh in seventy one and uh so I finished school there and uh and then then I moved back to Los Angeles right after graduating from high school. I went back home. Yeah. But the fantastic thing about that, as as life is, it was such a wonderful thing to experience both sides. Because Los Angeles, as you know, is a serious city. It's a city life, you know. Yes. And so to, to experience the Nebraska life, the small town life, uh, was was beautiful. I mean, to that I grew up knowing both sides, not just knowing one side. It, it gave me a broad uh, spectrum. Oh, absolutely. And, and I feel what you're saying because I yeah. grew up there as well, right? I started right. out in the news business there. Speak yeah. for a moment, if you would, about that growing up in the Midwest in Omaha, Nebraska, and people don't understand. We had a serious community. Half the cats that you came up with, playing with, who were students of your father or whatever, or your father mentored in, in, in many ways, as he did me in broadcasting. I remember when he came back from California. He went into publishing in the newspaper business. He was on television and TV shows, and I interviewed him numerous times on my TV shows. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, my impression of him was like an uncle, uh, old enough to be an uncle, a little bit younger than my dad, but uh, he could hang, you know, <laughs> with yeah. the cats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, I remember we used to joke, man, if you have Preston on the show, you get one question. So Preston, so, 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 so. And then he took it from there, man. He started lecture, uh, yeah. <laughs> teaching. Right. It was the easiest right. interview I've ever done, you know, because yeah. he said, well, that's all the time we got, folks. We're yeah. out here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's but right. He had so much real life experiences to talk about and share. You started as a young man. He also started as a young man in the big bands in the 40s. Am I right? That's right. Count yeah. Lacey? Who does yeah. that? In, in the early 20s or whatever, huh? Yeah, 22. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's, a, that was, that's, that's an amazing story uh, in itself. His, his life, of course, his book, uh, A Thousand Honey Creeks Later, is the chronicles of his life in music. 
And it, it is a truly amazing book that, that, that goes to the struggles, the, yeah. the whole be beautiful. Yeah, it's different. It's a must read for any aspiring uh, musician, I'll tell you. It's a must I mean, read. It's not only about music, it's about life. Yeah. It's about it's life. About and, life. And, and it's about African American Af life. African American culture. That's right. In the Midwest, because in the Little Midwest. Springs yeah. and is in Midwest. Iowa, is it? Yeah. 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 A little small yeah. town in Iowa. That's right, Thousand Honey Creeks, Honey, uh, Honey Creek, Iowa, and um, and so, you know, um, and growing up in Omaha was it, like, as you know, it's a family oriented place. It, it uh, sure. a hometown uh, feel, you know, that hometown feel. Um, it's just it's something about it. Um, People knew you were yeah. in love, yeah, and you didn't even know who they were. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah that's true. Yeah, you know, so we had to mind our manners in the community because <laughs> yeah, you yeah, had that's a family right. name to yeah. hold, man. You know, so it was a very tight knit community coming up in the fifties and the sixties in Omaha. <laughs> And uh, a very progressive community, if I may say so, man. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, participating in the struggle, man. Uh, yes, that's right. Home of Malcolm X. Home of Malcolm X. And some of the greatest musicians to ever play their instruments come from Omaha. Uh, we had... Uh, Speak on that for me, yeah. Oh, that's, we that's, had... That's oh, we... Uh, we just one to name to start with, uh, you know, uh, Buddy Miles, uh, who played with Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, oh, you got Stimsy Hunter, my mentor, Stimsy Hunter, yeah. who I uh, adore. <laughs> uh, a dearly he, beloved brother of ours, man. Oh, a classmate of mine. And, and, and Stimsy Hunter. Ways, yeah, man. We love you. Hank Red. Hank, Hank Red. Uh, uh, Stim Wonders. Who Stimsy mentored as well, really. Exactly. Um, Andre Lewis, Mondre, Simon yeah. Motown. Uh, Andre, a, a one of the greatest keyboardists. I had the pleasure of having him and Buddy Miles in my band uh, oh. several years. Uh, at one time, I had them both at the same time. And separately, uh, I had them both in my band, and what a uh, amazing honor that was to have grown up idolizing them and loving their music, and then to grow up and have them in my band. That that was surreal to, to for me. That was a surreal thing. Andre, is my unsung hero, and to have him on Andre stage, Lewis. Uh, and you. He played, he had that, he uh, especially made his his piano that he strapped on and oh, well, he, he, he was a pioneer yeah. in synthesized music. Yeah. I mean, you know. Amazing. Tweak it and, and, yeah. and, you know, way before his time. I mean, way before his time. He was uh, Prince. Max Ann, of course. Prince before Prince was Prince, you know, yeah. in terms of the keyboard yeah. and the sounds and that. Uh, he actually introduced a new genre of the jazz right. and the funk, right. man. And, and, uh, and those masks that he used in Mondre, uh, Daft Punk actually in an article uh, said no. that's where they got their... That, no. Yes, they... I, I read the article uh, myself. Wow. And they yeah, mentioned... He was out there, man. They said it's Mondre great. was the reason they did, did the mask. Daft Punk. That's no yeah. joke. Good and it, babies. Yeah. yeah. And um, Lomi Warsburn, who uh, wrote several platinum songs for Chaka, uh, my, another one of my mentors, Lomi, one of the greatest, to me, one of the greatest songwriters mm -hmm. at, uh, ever. Um, uh, oh, my God. Uh, she... She just, I, I, uh, another one that I, I just bow down to, <clears throat> Lomi, sure. Lomi Warfarin. And well, uh, the guy that people have, don't know much about, but 
we knew him in Omaha coming along, one of the greatest guitarists that ever picked up that. Billy Rogers. Billy Rogers. Billy Rogers, man. Billy Rogers, I was with him uh, a week or so before he passed. And uh, we were at a jam session in Los Angeles and we hung out. I uh, had the greatest time, the greatest time. And then I heard about a week or so later that he had passed. I was, I was very hurt. Curly Martin. Uh, Curly, who, still the, back in Omaha, right? Yeah, he's back in Omaha, and, so and he's on tour. He's on tour everywhere, though. Uh, he's on tour right now. Uh, going, he's going everywhere. Uh, he, um, when I first moved back to Los Angeles in '78, um, and I Curly called me, and I was still uh, trying to horn in on and and better my craft of sax playing. And so I, I wasn't the greatest, but Curly called me. He says, uh, "Come over, here. Uh, come over here tomorrow, boy. You're in my band. You, you're in my band, and I want you here tomorrow to rehearse and be on time." And, <laughs> yeah. And so I was there, and he put me. And, and his band and introduced me to, he's the one that really actually hooked me up with Lone Man, Hank Red, and uh, Walensky from Rufus. And, um, he introduced me to so many, ooh, he, so many, so many. I think he actually introduced me to Billy Rogers. And so I, we were, uh, and Ronaldo Ray, I mean, he, he, he took me around Los Angeles and introduced me to the, the Los Angeles, the scene. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about your dad and Motown again. Now, uh, yeah. how inspirational was that for you, uh, just being around all that talent, having a father who was a mentor as well, and your brother, a little bit older than you. Tenor sax, is that his thing? Or yeah. You guys play all the saxes, huh? Yeah, tenor sax. Yeah. Yes, sir. And let's name all the other brothers and sisters. Who you have a sister? Portia. Portia. And, yeah, and Preston Jr. Of course. Preston yeah. Jr. And then and I, Preston I, Jr. was like a big brother to me because he yeah. made my sister. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, and yes, sir. Uh, um, you know, uh, I tell you, I have another sister, Beverly, out there too, Beverly, uh, in Los Angeles. And uh, then there's Laura Love, who, who is a musician also. And uh, she's, she's quite active. Uh, she's got about eight albums now, I think. And, uh, but uh, talking, to, going back, like you said, about the Motown, I tell you, it was so inspirational that I had, I knew that I had to be blessed to be around this and there was no there was no going back after yeah, experience sure. experiencing that sure. I couldn't, couldn't be a normal person to just <laughs> not want to be in music and, and reach those heights going to the fa uh, fan fabulous form in los angeles yeah. and seeing stevie the jack sure. i was I was uh, there for the Jackson Five's very first concert when uh, Diana Ross introduced them in Los Angeles. Wow. Um, at the Fabulous Forum, sold out house, and the whole Motown, everyone was on the bill. Uh, Temptation, Supremes, uh, Marvin Gaye, and then she introduced the Jackson Five. Uh, and, um, and Stevie Wonder, he was, he was over the house quite a bit. Edward Starr used to come by all the time. Oh, um, yeah, uh, 25 miles to go. Well, that was 25 miles. That was one of my favorite songs. And he'd, come right? by, uh, he'd come by the house all the time, quite a bit. And uh, So your father was doing the Motown thing too, but his roots, of course, was Big Ben Jazz, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'd hear his stories. He'd talk about, he'd walk in history book, man. He, he, he yeah. schooled me. Yeah about our culture really through his understanding of jazz and 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 the, 
life and times of some of the greatest men. I heard about Miles Davis before I uh, met Miles after I came to China right. and Dizzy and all these cats, man. And I would drop your father's name and they'd remember him, man. You know, oh, yeah. Man. yeah. But uh, his story is an interesting one because uh, uh, what, what I'm trying to imagine is having a father like that. Was he a strict uh, teacher or how did he pass that knowledge on to you guys coming up? Was it osmosis? Of course, you had to do your rudiments and all the drills, the practice. What was it like? Did you study outside of the house? He, what was inside the house? Yeah, and, and, and mostly he really, to tell you the truth, Dad wasn't, uh, I believe. No pressure, huh? You no, know, it wasn't really a lot of pressure. Uh, I guess he kind of wanted us to make our own way. Okay. Uh, you know, you have to, in a way, uh, you, you, in some ways, it's a good thing to make your own way because then you have to fight for it instead of it just being handed to you. And sometimes when things are handed it, you don't appreciate it, number one. And and when you fight for it, then you appreciate it because you know what it is to fight, to hold on. Absolutely. But the motivation must have been very high. And so the motivation and the pressure yeah. to, to to live up to those two to measure norms. Up, sure. And my father, for me, as the younger, youngest one, to try to measure up to the standards was it was a lot of pressure for me right and now, the only reason I, I raise that because in the interviews that i've done with him he was a severe critic of the fakers Almost yeah like <laughs> yeah yeah he was serious about the music about the black art form out of doubt we oh my god and uh, and i made us so appreciated black. man just yeah. listening to him you know yeah I become him now on that level, I uh, because there's a lot of fakers, and it's it's a terrible thing to see um, that I put it on the teachings there, and 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 the suppression of our art, uh, and that's that's why we have this 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 lack of uh, people that know the history of our music and and of our art right. because it has been quite quite suppressed and and it's a terrible thing it's a terrible day that's another show <laughs> absolutely I'm that's a whole thing man we can we can take that and yeah. uh, that's a good transition point because uh, I want you, this is our first interview, this is my first celebrity interview, ladies and gentlemen, on Japan Journal, and I'm pretty pleased and proud to have my homeboy here, so I'm going to ask you right here on this show to be a regular contributor, if you will. I'd love to. And, and let's love share to. the history of our music, man, because you are on your way to being a living legend, because you Thank started you. so young. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. And once again, congratulations on the Hall Thank of Fame you. induction coming up. It's a beautiful yes, thing. I'm excited and proud. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask you to play for our uh, EDM, to take us out. Yeah, our EDM uh, uh, Japan lovers of EDM. I'd like for you to play uh, EDM jazz for them. Okay. Indeed. All right. And, uh, I'll add my person. What track number is that on the CD? Uh, the he, CD for me. Give I believe number right nine. nine. Number nine? Number nine. All right, ladies and gentlemen. And it's called, yeah, there it is, Richie Love, New Horizons. Who did Indeed. the artwork, man? That, the artwork, uh, I'm so glad you asked me because one of my great, my, one of my best friends, uh, Stozo, uh, R. Stozo, uh, we call him Stozo the Clown, also, a.k.a. Stozo the Clown. And uh, Chuggy Otis 
uh, who wrote Strawberry Letter 23, and probably a lot of your fandom globally, uh, everyone uh, globally probably music lovers know Shiggy Otis, uh, John Nails' son, uh, and he introduced me to Stozo. Um, wow, I, I, it's got to be 40 years ago, wow. and at least, and Stozo is the uh, artist for George Clinton uh, was all the oh. all of the funkadelic the caricatures and all of that stuff all the characters uh, he and and Funkensteins Fred and Wesley um, Bootsy Orchard Jones oh man it's a list a who's who's list of album covers his art you've You've seen his art all it's over right. music. Right. Every that, you know, right. all the cartoon right. work. When you, uh, a lot of people, uh, they know his work. It's kind of signature. Uh, yeah. You know, well, it's kind of. So, it. Yeah. You. He he's going to do. Uh, <laughs> he's going to do my next CD too for me. I begged him to do this one, and I begged him to <laughs> okay. do this one too, but. Uh, he, we're, we're such great friends that I, I've been wanting for many, many years for him to uh, do, do the cover for me. And when it came, came about and I called him and I said, please, I, I, this is when I need you. Uh, he said, oh, man, you got it. And uh, I was so happy and proud to have him do, to be a part of my album, of my CD. And uh, we've, he's always been a part of my life a long time, and we're such great friends. And so it was an honor to have him, have him there uh, with me. Well, it was great. He did a good job, really nice job. Yeah. And but, um, it's an honor for me to have you on this first broadcast of uh, Japan Journal's regular series, Going Global from Japan on all social media formats and platforms, YouTube. Twitter, Facebook, and a couple of others that we're working on right now. And uh, so, without any further ado, I'm going to say, name that song again as we go out. EDM Jazz. And real quick, I'd like to say thank you for having me. Uh, my pleasure. Arigato. And I'd like to thank all my fans, friends, family. Uh, much love. Please go out and grab New Horizons and and thank you for being there for me and in my music career and I, I thank you and appreciate you for having me and uh, wish you all the best. Can't wait to see you and send my love out to you and, and your family and, and all globally that are watching. All right, brother. Thank you very much. Thank we'll you. take it out. We'll end the show, and then we'll uh, have another extra few minutes of. I want you to hear the full uh, promotional video of uh, feeling good about myself. Right? Yes. All right. All right. That's going to do it for another edition of Japan Travel. I'm your host, Mal Adams, coming to you live from the Media Arts Lab in beautiful downtown Kakigawa City on Japan Journal, the internet's number one weekly English online cybercast from Japan up in here with my man, my homeboy, my young brother, Richie Love, bringing new horizons to the world. They call him the sexiest man in show business, Richie Love. We'll post you when we come on again. Stay tuned.
Japan Journal, the Internet's number one English language weekly online cybercast from Japan. Japan Journal with Mal Adams. 